Jane Fonda, daughter of a famous actor, preparing for her first opening night as a star on the Broadway stage. I'm having my dresser come a week before we go out of town, and I'm putting a screen up, and I'm going to change on every costume change. I'll try to get some sort of clothes that approximate what I have to put on. When are, you, when are you going out of town? You're going this week from Tuesday. The 17th. <gasps> is it a week from Tuesday? Monday, then, it is. Jane's play will be pronounced a success or failure by seven newspaper reviewers. To her, Walter Kerr of the Herald Tribune is the most important. Living Camera will be with Kerr opening night and with Jane in the crucial weeks leading up to it. Weeks of excitement, aspiration, and grinding work. Okay, Jane's dance is next. because I'm getting angry again with you. There is a very simple step to step from up there down. It is only 17 inches, and you can ha you, ha you nearly fall flat on your back because you wanted to make it something attractive. It is, cannot be done like it is a real strip because there we are having Andreas Butzinas is putting Jane Fonda stripping on Broadway. That's what it'll count, uh, people like Arthur Lawrence will say, or your father, and that's not the idea. Yeah, I know that. Well, you're doing it like this. Well, Jack, the uh oh. Yeah, that's very good. Because. Ah, God. God. Look at that, the audience. The audience, dear, dear because they're seeing your green shoes. Ah, uh, because I've got a matching shoe. You see, now, but that's exactly what I want. I don't care if it's a choreographer or anything. That's what I want. And that's what I want. Hmm? Yeah, I see. I see. That's why it didn't feel like it. it didn't feel quite. It was the first time we did it, well, I remember when. The play, The Fun Couple, is in the final stages of rehearsal in the hands of its director, Andreas Fusinas. Andreas has coached Jane before. They're friends, and he dates her often. But this is their first play together his first chance to direct, and her first chance to star on Broadway. They face Broadway's fearsome odds. Of the 57 plays that began rehearsals last year, seven failed in tryouts out of New York City. Of the 50 plays that did open on Broadway, 36 were flops. Only 14 succeeded. Up against these odds, Andreas tries to leave no detail to chance. From Jane's acting, to her wardrobe. That's a very natural movement in those kind of things. Now, do you think you can have, like the men's trousers, they have, uh, you know, the hip top? The thing that grips. But it's also the elastic isn't as tight. That's right. It's strong. And now she's going, they're going to push all those things out. So yes. Okay. Have you got time to tie this or do you want it just... But I think it would be more secure if it were a... If it were a... Or did she change Hook, I think, is better. Now. You know, she has to pull it down, but then it might work. clicks there. I like Jane. Ah! Oh, what happened? You're in agony. Hi, girl. There it is. Okay. Bye. 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 Going back to the theater for a last rehearsal, Jane rides down a street where the name Fonda has been made famous by her father, Henry Fonda. This is Broadway. 
where Jane's name is beginning to appear on the marquees for her film roles. But to Jane, real stardom will arrive when she has scored a personal success on her own, on the stage. The fun couple is a light comedy, but serious effort goes into it, right up to Jane's last New York rehearsal with her co-star, Bradford Dillman. We have the cast on stage, please. Come on. It is places now for is the third act. Oh. We're in the bedroom now. The house is going to have. Music will fade out with the house out. Curtain is going up. The point is simply this. The less you knew about me, the greater my responsibility. What do you mean responsibility? To you. Now, honey, I feel that our life together, you see, is just like one great big surprise party. Surprise party for who? You. Oh, Gil, what a marvelous thing to say. You're still doing the same thing, except you're doing it in a different form. Before you did it this way, now you're doing it this way. Really? Change the line. Uh, please, would you say, uh, all right, I'm going to bring my lovers in. That's it. Well, it says outside that, that Brad and I are starring in the show, you know, and that's one of the reasons that people are coming. But I don't feel... I don't feel that I can quite live up to that, you know? And that's when, I, when Andreas gets angry with me, he says, No! You haven't got any more responsibility than anybody else in the cast, because what I do, other people react to me, I start hiding, creeping around and kind of shrinking and disappearing into the... Oh, I just split my... Disappearing into the woodwork. But it's so funny. I guess everybody feels that way. I guess Marilyn, certainly someone in her kind of a position, must have felt that way. You know, where all the enormous thing that went on around her, and yet she'd go home. And she was. And she felt ugly, and she felt scared, and all of those things. It's a funny feeling. You have some tea? Mm. I used to be so excited because, you know, the first time you really discover something that you love or organically love to do, you know, it's not a matter of, oh, I love to paint. Yes, no, I'm going to, I'm going to read, I'm going to go to school. And you don't really do it. It's a kind of, it's a fabricated thing. But the first time something that you really, you go to sleep loving it, and you wake up and you love it and you don't have to think about it, and you don't mind staying home alone at night, because you've got this thing that you really love to do. I care for, for this play and for these people as much as I would have cared. I told last night to Jane, I said, I want you when you go on the stage to know that there is one single human being in that audience, me, that cares about you as much I would have cared if I was up on the stage. And I said, and if it's anything that it has comforted me is that I know that there is a group of people that I'm working with in this play, and I can name it, you know, it's like Ben, Diana, the Lost, Jane, which I know that they care about themselves and about the play as much as I care. But in the beginning, it was a matter of the resentment that I felt from other actors, which, you know, well, the only reason she's got the part is because of, you know, and they found his daughters. And what I did to compensate for the guilt that I felt was I worked terribly hard, you know, like everybody else would go to two hours of acting class a week, I'd go to six, you know, and singing and dancing, and I, I overdid it, the whole thing, you know. I became twice as beatnik as everybody else, you know. I took more subways than anybody else. I, would, you know, it was a sort of a, a phony thing, but it, 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 it was necessary for me to be able to feel, yeah, that's right, I'm, I'm, I'm Henry's daughter, but I've worked just as hard as all of you, if not harder. All right, that's good. 
before audiences in Wilmington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New Haven. God, it's just a fabulous. Um. How about I get that one? has been called. Yes. All right, we'll give you that. We go up at 8.45. Please, everyone off the set. Places, please. Everyone off the set. Places. Take your house out slow, please. That's, that's all right, honey. That's uh, perfectly all right. Uh, Tish? Yeah? There you go. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> you're a nice man. Dear. What? I, I said you're a nice man. Oh. My mother always told me to go out and look for a nice man. Marry him. Well, I sure am glad that you uh, took your mother's advice. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. 
Well, uh, <laughs> How long have I known you? Uh, four hours and 27 minutes. Surgery. If they are to appreciate the shenanigans on stage in the fun couple is a sign of growing old, we aged ten years last night. I guess that means they didn't uh, enjoy it. <laughs> by tonight, when the performance is over, we're going to have that first act rewritten. Then you and I begin to work. And we work non-stop. Now that means non-stop. What we do in Wilmington, we show it to Baltimore. What we do in Baltimore, we show it to Philadelphia. Now. And that's it. Right, now. so that the play made absolutely no sense at all. Well, that's tough because, you know, you feel a certain amount of responsibility to people that have paid five dollars or something. And you think, oh God, what are we doing to them? And nothing was getting done. It was like one line a night. And we were pretty desperate. So Andrea sat up and wrote a synopsis of a possible play using the scenes we had, plus six new scenes. And we got on the train to Philly figuring we had to open the next night with six new scenes. <laughs> I was just thinking what we can do. We can put a, 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 an attachment on this. That I just had to come up to you and say, sort of do it together. I just want to say one word. That's it. And you yeah, say you word. you say yes, and then I say yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I see. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, but uh, I mean, there I was, right here in Tijuana, to see the bullfights. And instead of looking at the bulls, I was looking at you. I mean, your eyes are so clear. Well, I just had to come up to you and say, I just want to say one word. Yes. Yes. Should we go back over that just let's a little bit? Let's go over that. Uh, Honey, I am being serious. I mean, there I was, right here in Tia, wanted to see the bullfight. Instead of looking at the bulls, I was looking at you. And your eyes were so clear. Well, I just had to come over to you and say, I want you to say, just, 
This is the last performance on the road. Next stop, New York and the opening on Broadway. Our flights! We could have had another three curtains. If that is going to be tomorrow, coming up and staying and going down and not making the decision up and up again, it's disgraceful these people working and then not getting that back. You're A friend and hero to both Jane and Andreas has watched this performance. He is Lee Strasberg, great teacher of the theater and director of Actors Studio, here to offer his advice before the New York opening. We all adore each other. I don't know that I've ever seen so much material looking for a play. Well, I, guess I think you have a play there, unless the author is just sort of against the ideas. It's a matter of, a matter of looking at the material from a, from a fresh play point of view and saying, what can this material be used for in a play, not in the sketch? The, the audience doesn't want to forgive mistakes at, at that particular moment. The things that are done must be well done. Tonight, Jane and Andreas open on Broadway. How do you feel? Do you feel nervous? Not now. I feel a funny kind of excitement and I'm pretending it's because it's Christmas. Every opening is at Christmas. I keep on saying to myself, this kind of people that I admired so much, like her, you just couldn't possibly think I was disgusting. Try out at Actor Studio, hallowed center of learning for believers in the method approach to acting. The studio is full of reverence for its director, Lee Strasberg, who is a sustaining spirit for Jane and Andreas. While Lee Strasberg demonstrates his theatrical know-how and confidence, two of his students must leave to keep their date with an opening night crowd, the critics and Walter Kerr.
to Miss Jane Fonda, an admirer of your all of the night, love, Peter. Oh, sweet. Come in. Hi. Take it easy. <laughs> Great. Ay, 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 ay. It's only a play. We've got yeah, the studio yeah. we come back to. That's right. Okay, I'll we'll see you later. Okay. Yeah. Hello, darling. I have some fun. You're nervous. What? You're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody thought about what we're going to do afterwards? Sardis. Sardis? Yeah. I figure we'll all... I don't want to get reviews in Sardis, but... Uh, well, you won't until 12.30 and we're down to what, 10 something. Because that's a disaster area when reviews come in. I hate it there when reviews come in. Well, we should... Go there for a drink or something, yeah. and move on hurriedly. It's about the best. Andres, here yet? Uh-uh. Oh, you need to relax. Hmm? <gasps> well, we good. If your heart gets in your hair, you mustn't kick it along. Well, I hear the no new the Joan Crawford Betty Davis movie is bad, too. Nobody wins all the time. It's too bad for them. What a dump. If... My heart gets in your hair... Why does it seem so dark in here? From his home in the suburbs, reviewer Walter Kerr is leaving to see the fifth play he's had to review in as many nights. A demanding pace for Kerr, with little reward so far this week. Well, this is, you know, this is rough. This is the first time I've had five in a row in, gee, I bet six years. Let's see, what, what started the week? The nightlife, yeah, which was disappointing. I'd hope for more there. And, well, that, that thing they brought from the coast, you know, the perfect setup. Which, With the movie stars. Yeah, which is no good at all. And then I was disappointed last night. Boy, I've got a funny feeling in the pit of my stomach. Who will carry a bad play? There are very, very few stars today uh, who can carry a show for you. Now, how many can? Now, who will carry a bad play? I mean, it's very, very hard to say with any kind of uh, certainty now. What does happen is if you get up maybe a little break in the notices, or maybe your subject matter is kind of interesting to audiences, and then if you have a couple of names that they're curious to see right now, that the combination might help you for a limited time. But basically, I, you have to have a strong play, and if you have strong people, fine. Not yet. I'm not... 
terrified yet. I feel a little weak. And I run around so much. Mm. Look at that. Mm. How are you two? Oh, God. Oh. What? Open it? Open it? How can you do this to me right before I go on the phone? Darling. What? Oh, I can't believe. Oh, darling. It says that the snake has all the lines that you have here. Thank you. Oh. It's like having a pain here and someone bites you there. This doesn't hurt anymore. I was nervous before going on stage. Now I'm numb. Now you go on and be good, huh? Relax. And don't forget what I said this afternoon. Stand by, Carl. Carl, take your house to half down. Hold it, please. Stand by, Joe. Right. Stand by on stage. Ab, here we go. Take your house out, Carl. Stand by, Jane. Okay, the curtain's going up, and it's up. Uh, Tish! I, I, I can't come out. Why? I, I haven't got a, a nightgown. Well, you don't need it. I'm sorry, Gil. Uh, uh, no, that, that, that's, that's all right, honey. That's, uh, perfectly all right. Uh, Tish? Yeah? There you go. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Man. 
marry him? Well, I sure am glad that you uh, took your mother's advice. Yeah, I'll take that. You think we really got married? You know, I mean, everything was, was in Spanish. Well, I, I paid the judge in American money. So. Uh, Tish, do you have any preference about which side of the bed you... No, no. You don't, okay. Well... <clears throat> Gil? Yeah? Gil, suppose we hadn't met. Okay. And, uh, we hadn't gotten married. Well, then we wouldn't be on our honeymoon. But... But, Gil, no, I mean, what would you have done if we hadn't met? Well, uh, I probably would have gone to the bullfights. Alone? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Oh. Hey. But they feel good, your pajama tops. Tish, Hello? come here, would you? You are a very nice-looking girl. Is that the only reason you asked me to marry you? Well, do you want to know all the reasons now? No. Uh, you don't, okay. No. Oh, no. Tish. Mm. Hi, honey. Where have you been? Shopping. <laughs> Oh, it's hot, isn't it? Oh, I've got to take something off. <laughs> Spark goes with the wig. <laughs> Don't they look small down there in the dock? Who? The little pieces of confetti. <laughs> well, honey, I don't know how to do it. Stand by in the curtain. Back to the blind curtain. Gil, are we really having a fight? What do you think? It isn't that I don't want to. I don't know how. And curtain. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, no, I'm not. You got, you got laughs, sweetheart, in that first laugh that you, at first laugh, in that first laugh that you've never had. Do you know that? Could you hear them? Baby, you got laughs you've never had. I don't feel good about that at all. John said something to me about calling him. I couldn't do that. I, you know. Oh, you are marvelous, darling. I'm, I'm, I'm very relaxed. But relax, and you have your pace in it, and you have your moments in it. Very good. The performance is very good. Everybody. Yeah? Places? Places? Yeah. That's Jerry. <laughs> this is places. This is places. Places Good luck, Knuckles. Places. Joe, you can stand by the curtain going up. Stand by, Jane. Stand by, baby. Go get him. So you can still catch him. Yeah. Hey, well, are we going? Are we staying? Well, l listen, you guys, wait right here. Okay, I'll be right back. Don't worry, we're gonna go. Hey, Gil! Oh, no, no, no. Don't expect any French cooking around here. 
I'm going to go wash my hair and forget the whole thing. Listen, we're through the bad part of the play, you know. Did you hear the laughs she got? Did you hear them? Oh, the yes. First part, oh, yeah. You? Honey, that have never been there. Darling? I don't think that they, I don't think they, they dug it. You know. oh. Uh, but you think it's going all right? Yeah, very much. And at the moment, the European game went well. Very much. I think the time has been too long. because I think that everybody knew about it. <clears throat> I find it impossible to believe that the fun couple ever went out of town. If it had gone out of town, they'd have closed it. Nor do I believe one single thing I saw at the Lyceum last night. Surely Jane Fonda and Brad Dillman, who have small reputations to consider, weren't sitting there in that Tijuana bed, she in the upper part, part of his pajamas, he in the lo lower part, half fighting shy of each other and half wanting to paw a bit as they contemplated their first honeymoon night together. Her hair up to now had been... <laughs> her hair, I don't know why I'm laughing. Her hair up to now had been sufficient for her to play the role of Lady Godiva, if need be and need was. The only thing it proves, I'm afraid, is that girls' hips are not always what you want them to be, that an actress's 
feet get dirty if she doesn't wear shoes for a whole act. And that no matter what the circumstances, professional performance performers do not die of embarrassment on the stage. I'm going to wash my hair and forget the whole thing, says Mr. Dillman, saving dialogue a little later on. And now I'm going to wash my hair, but I shall never, never forget. Mm -hmm. Wow, 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 wow. Boy, that is depressing. Mm. Oh, God, it really is like needles. But, uh, what is it that bothers you? What? It's Kerr's review. Mmm. Mm. I didn't talk about the actors at all, except simply to say that, it, you know, no matter what the circumstances, actors do not die of embarrassment on stage. You know, I would count it among the all-time worsts. I mean, if I made up a list of five, it would be on it, I think. I'm sorry, Brad. Sorry about what, I Brad? Well, I was hoping a little more than that. Well, yes, but it's not your fault. Well, it seems so. <laughs> no, no. Jane? Uh, we have been uh, in minute by minute uh, consultation with the box office and the Schubert office. We sold $140 worth of seats. <laughs> Uh, today, which was a perfect matinee day and which sold out all over town. Uh, we are a flop. Uh, the result is that uh, we have been advised by the Schubert's to get out. Uh, we're going to close tonight after the performance. Places. Stand by the curtain going up and then stand by your mic off. mother's advice. Yeah, I'll take that. Street car, I don't expect any French cooking around here. Ah! The script has to be there. 
Having been through an experience like this, the same kind of script, I wouldn't do it. The script has to be there. That was, that was difficult. It's, you know, I realized that there is no story. And I think that that's partially my kind of a fall that I have, personally, as, as a director, as an actor, too. I go too deep in the character in it, and I get fascinated with the character. And I feel that, well, that fascination will attract other people, you know. And I, I really think that these people, they're interesting. But my work would have been the same. I, I don't know any other way. I've done the same thing. The experience now, and the same script now, I wouldn't do the, I wouldn't even have done the play. No more games. No more games. 